Hello YouTube, John back here with Beer, Bourbon, and Bushcraft. On this episode, we're going to review a beer, a bourbon, and go over a bushcraft or survival tool, and give you a review on all three. Tonight we're going to start with the beer. This is Gaelic Ale. It is from the Highland Brewing Company, which is in Asheville, North Carolina. This beer is 5.5% alcohol, and it's an American Amber Ale with a multi-body which finishes with slight touches of caramel sweetness. We'll see. Um, being Scottish myself, I was drawn to the Gaelic Ale. Thought it looked good. I liked the tartan on the printing, on the label. Thought I would give it a try and do a review on it and see how it, how it fares. So we'll crack this open with a hand forged bottle opener that you'll see in a forthcoming episode when we go to the forge and start talking about blacksmithing and some survival skills, something you need to know. Um, we'll definitely do a video on how to make yourself a bottle opener like this or any variation you want to. Now it's not perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect because you know what? It just opened my beer. That's what it's supposed to do. Let's see how this Gaelic ale from the Ash or from the Highland Brewing Company in Asheville, North Carolina, is. You got a nice pour. Not too much head on it. So, not overly carbonated, which is good. I'm not a huge fan of highly carbonated beer. It's got a nice amber color to it. Nice creamy head on it. First smell, you can definitely tell it's, a, it's an American ale. It definitely has that ale, the chocolate, malts that they use when they brew. You can definitely smell that in there. It's got that, that scent to it. It's nice tasting. It's not overly sweet. It definitely has some hints of caramel to it. Um, not being a complete beer expert, but if I had to guess, I would say that they use Cascade hops and maybe Great Northern hops in this. The hops are very, very light. So if you don't like a hoppy beer, if you're not a big fan of the uh, Pilsners or the IPAs, um, you might want to give this a shot because the hops are, are very flat. There's enough hop in there that you can tell that it, it's got hops to it, but they're not overly strong which I'm kind of a fan of. I'm not a, a huge IPA or Pilsner fan. I don't like that tartness that you get the aftertaste uh, from those beers. Oh, that's good. It sits well on the tongue. It's not overly carbonated, so you don't, you don't get that snap on your tongue um, to where you want to get it off, feel like it's Pop Rocks on there or something. Um, not super sweet. Nice medium body. This is a definitely a very good overall beer. Uh, uh, I'm definitely enjoying this. I I would have to rank this in some of the better beers I've had. I've never, like I said, I've never had the Highland Brewing Company's products before. But for a good American ale, this definitely hits the mark. I would have to say on a rating scale, um, as far as beers go, and I'm thinking of my rating scale when I'm talking about beer would be, I'm going to sit down and have a beer. This is not, I'm going to throw a 30 pack in the cooler type beer and sit by the fire. That's something that we'll talk about later and definitely a much less expensive product, something that you can just 
sit around and you don't mind if eight or ten buddies grab out of it. Um, this is something that you want to sit down and actually enjoy a beer. I think I would give this a 7.5. It's definitely a very tasty beer. Um, it's not too sweet, not overly carbonated, but might be a little bit on the underside of carbonation. They could probably use a little bit more as far as my tastes go. Um, but for, for an American lager, definitely very good. They have a good mixture of um, malted barley in there, the, the caramel and the chocolate. Uh, you can pick up distinct tastes of both of them and they're very well balanced. So overall, uh, 7.5, this is a very tasty beer. I'm very happy I picked it up. Again, Highland Brewing Company, great job. Now we're gonna move on to the second portion of our review, which is the bourbon. Now, I live in West Central Kentucky, right in the heart of bourbon country. I've been to multiple brewery tours, or not brewery, distillery tours, sorry. Um, love going, it's so much fun, you learn so much every time you go to, everybody does everything differently, they have different mixtures, and you get to meet the people that work around here. Um, they do the tours, they've been there, I've had distillery tours from the great granddaughter of the person that started the distillery to an old person that was fighting retirement that had spent 35 years at that distillery and loved her job and she let you know it and she gave us a hell of a tour. I also went to a small side distillery where the people bent over backwards to accommodate us. They brought a van up for my wife and I, drove us around and gave us a very personal tour of the distillery and made sure that we we enjoyed the entire process. So going to see uh, this type of thing here in the Bourbon Trail here in Kentucky is just unbelievable. If you're ever here, I highly recommend stopping in and seeing any of them. I've never had a bad time at any distillery I've gone to. Now tonight is one that I have not been to the distillery yet. It is high on my list. This is Buffalo Trace. And it is distilled from Buffalo Trace Distillery Company in Franklin County. Um, haven't been there yet, but it's high on my list. I, I have to go there. Number one, because they make a bourbon whiskey that is almost unattainable. If anyone's heard of Pappy Van Winkles, these are the guys that make it. Um, that is an incredible bourbon and at some point, I would like to do a review on it if I'm ever lucky enough to find myself a bottle of either the 10 year or the 13 year, uh, the 18 or 20 year, I really have better ways to spend $1,400 than on a bottle of bourbon. If my name was Donald Trump, yeah, I might find myself a bottle, but in the situation I'm in, I can't see spending that much. But some of the lower end bottles for a good sipping bourbon, you might see it show up on this channel. And if you do, I'm going to be smiling from ear to ear, and you're definitely going to enjoy that episode. But tonight we're doing Buffalo Trace, their, their standard Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And this is a 90 proof, 45% alcohol. Um, a very, very tasty, tasty bourbon. And we'll go ahead and sample it, and I will give you my... My inputs on it. Nice real cork stopper on the bottle. That's always a plus. Um, had a nice aluminum ring on it to keep it sealed so you don't get any loss to the angel share. Pour ourselves a little dram there. And cork it back up. Oh, sorry, the wife wants Wants to have herself a little little nip. It's got nice color to it. Nice caramel color. I'd say medium as far as range goes on bourbon. And the good thing is roll it around the glass. 
and you watch how it slides down the glass. If it's nice and smooth, you can tell that there's not contaminants and they used real water in the bourbon. And I say, well, how do you know that? Well, my wife and I were lucky enough to go into Barstown and we met with a colonel and did a four-hour class called the Bourbon University in which this certified Kentucky colonel taught us the ins and outs of tasting, sniffing, tasting, looking at, and enjoying good Kentucky bourbon. This so far appears to be very high quality Kentucky bourbon. From the smell, you can tell it's definitely got a sweetness to it. So it's not a rye blended bourbon, it's a wheat blended bourbon. Give me a little bit of caramel or almond on the nose. It's very smooth. You can definitely feel the sweet sensors on your tongue kick off because it does have a sweetness to it. It's not sweet as in sugary sweet, but it doesn't set off the, the sour or salty sensors on your tongue. It sets off the sweet sensors, which is a very nice feeling. It kind of leaves most of your tongue blank except for the back, the sweet sensors, which you can really, is where the taste develops in your mouth. Um, it's not overly high proof, so there's not a ton of alcohol in it. So it's not super strong. It doesn't burn your lips or burn down the center of your tongue. Um, you can pick up caramel and a little bit of nuttiness. There's not much wood. I'm not sure exactly how long uh, this product is aged, so it definitely hasn't picked up the, the char taste from the charred white oak barrels that it's aged in. And again, the same sensation, flat on almost all of my tongue except the back where the sweet sensors picked up and gave a very delightful bourbon taste. I would say it's on a bourbon rating scale, if I had to judge color, taste, and actual enjoyment of just sipping this bourbon. Um, I would have to put this about an 8.5. This is a very enjoyable bourbon. I'm very happy that I picked it up. Um, I think it would be very good mixed. Uh, the sweetness in it would definitely tie into um, any soda or anything you would want to mix it with. Um, a little bit of citrus would definitely uh, help with the taste of it while it's mixed. But even just on some ice or neat, this is a very, very enjoyable bourbon. Very good, definitely 8.5 on the bourbon tasting scale. Smooth, has a nice clean finish. Um, it's not overpowering at all, um, like you would think some whiskeys are. It's uh, doesn't leave you with that. It's very good. So the Buffalo Trace Bourbon <clears throat> So Buffalo Trace very good as you can see a nice nice caramel color very nice bottle. It's got the buffalo on the front. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to going and visiting them at their, their distillery um, seeing how they make this fine product. Um, Overall, very enjoyable bourbon if you want to drink it neat on the rocks or mix it. Um, it's not outside of the price range. Uh, most of it runs uh, $23 to $25 for a fifth uh, if you can find it in your local area. I know it's pretty readily available here because I live in bourbon country. Um, but if you can find it, I would definitely recommend picking up a bottle of this and giving it a try. It's a very good bourbon.
For tonight's survival or bushcraft product, we are going with the Aquamira Frontier Straw. This is a water filter that gives you parasite protection, up to 99.9% .9 cyst removal, um, chlorine, taste, and odor removal, and also removes any other type of contaminants from your water. Um, it removes cryptosporidium, Giardia and other biotoxins such as microcystin. It filters up to 50% more than its previous design. It weighs one ounce. It has three replaceable pre filters that remove any type of bacteria or contaminants before it hits your mouth. Um, also, a nice thing about this product is the way it's packaged. And as you can see, it's a, a Ziploc bag, and the bag itself is actually a water container. Inside is the straw, and I've already ripped the top off of it. But you open up the Ziploc bag, which is a nice, sturdy Ziploc bag. The product comes out. You have an information card inside here. Inside the information card, um, it tells you how to use it, gives you your instructions, how to put it together, and whatnot. Um, this, if you're in a Shit hit the fan scenario, fire tender, hello, it's a nice piece of cardboard. Definitely don't want to throw this out and keep it packaged up. But when you're done, you have a nice water container that you can use in conjunction with your straw. The Frontier Straw. Easily fits together. The straw snaps onto the filter. You place the filter into your water and drink from the straw. Very simple setup. You fill your bag, place your straw in, and hydrate. So we're going to actually put this to a test tonight. Um, got a bowl of water that has been filled with all sorts of good stuff. So I live in the heart of bourbon country in west central Kentucky. I live on 14 acres out in the country. We compost everything, and I mean everything. Took a sample from the compost pile tonight and placed it in a bowl of water. And as you can see, just the water undisturbed is a nice gray, but as soon as I start to stir it, I'm finding some rocks onion skin, unidentifiable particles, nice hangies off the spoon. We'll give this a good stir and I thought this would be a good test for the Frontier Straw. So we will stir this up, get it nice and dark, a bunch of good product in there. Mm -hmm. Now, things would have to be really, really bad for me to have to drink this water. But if things were really, really bad and I had to drink this water and I had the Frontier Straw with me, is it going to keep me safe? That's what I want to know. It's a small, inexpensive product. If I throw it in my bag and things have hit the fan and I have to drink from water like this, is this product going to keep me safe and give me good water? That's what's important. It doesn't matter anything else. Am I going to be able to get good drinkable water from any source I can find? If I'm running from looters or crazies or zombies and I need a drink, can I drink this? and hydrate myself. That's what's important. So that's what we're going to test. You'll be able to see coming up the straw how clear the water comes out from this bowl, which I'm actually going to place this straw in and drink from. And I will give you my input as far as the texture, taste, flavor of the water. So we'll give it a good stir up here. Get this water nice and dark. Let's see how it smells. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the cows have been near this, I will tell you that. So it's wow. not 
Um, Manure? Anyone who's familiar with compost, this smells like the drippings coming out of a compost pile, which is exactly what it is. Which is probably the, the harshest liquid you would ever have to drink in any type of a scenario. But if I'm going to test this, I don't want to go and just go outside to a mud puddle and drink some semi-clear water. I mean, I know the filters in there are going to protect me from any type of protozoans that are in there. So, But is it going to clear this into what's going to be survivable water? We'll find out. I don't care if it's going to be palatable. Is it going to keep me alive? That's what. At that point, that's what I care about. It doesn't have to taste good. Is it going to keep me safe and not make me die of dysentery or cholera or dehydration because I can't stop going to the bathroom. So that's what's important with this. So here we go. Let's see how she works. Put her in the bowl. Now, first sip came out a little black, and I think that's just some activated charcoal from inside the filter. But then it turned clear. You can see the straw is nice and clear. So, now I'll take a drink and actually swallow this and see how we do. Oh my god. It's not bad. It, it kind of tastes like fall smells. It kind of has a like an, a dead leaf taste to it. You know that smell that you get when leaves are dying and everything. It, it's not unpleasant at all. Um, I wouldn't call it super enjoyable. I mean, it's not you know a bottle of ice cold Fiji or anything, but I'm not going to not drink this. And I think I could definitely survive with this out in a shit hit the fan scenario. That worked, I think, extremely well. Um, I'll let the water drain out of it, and you can see some of the the charcoal, or maybe some of the the detritus from the the bowl here collected in there. Um, on a scale of one to ten, as far as um, what this unit retails for, let me check my notes here real quick. I can't remember all this stuff. Frontier straw. Um, you can pick this up for thirteen dollars, and again, you get you get the bag, which could be water collection. You've got the instructions, which is a nice solid piece of cardboard that could be used to set up a windshield around a small stove. Um, you could fold it. You could do cut it. Do many things with it. Use it as fire tender to get a fire going. Um, so the instructions itself aside from teaching you how to use the product, have a multitude of uses. And then the packaging bag is a nice, solid Ziploc bag that is designed to be used as a water collection device. Collect your water up, place your straw on side, and hydrate yourself. And if you need to be on the move, you, you fill your bag up, zip it up, throw it in your pack, and have a drink a little bit later. And it's got a nice solid zip closure on it. Um, all in all, I would have to say for the price, <coughs> for what it is, um, I would have to give this product a 9.5. I'm very impressed. I know what's in this bowl and I would not drink this straight without going through any type of filter. But coming through this filter, like I say, it had a, a slight fall taste to it. Almost that taste you get on your lips when, when fall is hit. Um, you know what I'm talking about when you're out and the leaves have fallen and things are wet and you can taste that on your lips. That's what the water tasted like. So it wasn't unpleasant at all. Um, and you could see it was coming up the straw nice and clear. Um, 
I know based on the filters that are inside the unit, all of the biologicals have been filtered out. So I'm not worried about um, any type of uh, amoeba or protozoan infection in my gut that's going to dehydrate me um, even farther than I already am if I have to use this in a uh, SHTF situation. So um, definitely a 9.5. I'm extremely impressed with this because I was I was looking at this bowl as I was as I was uh, reviewing my beer and my bourbon and uh, thinking, wow. I really hope that the beer and the bourbon that I review don't come up after drinking through the straw because if this thing failed and I'm sucking this into my body, I would more than likely expel all of the contents that are in my stomach all over the table and then you on YouTube would probably have a really good laugh. <laughs> so again, this, this is what... I was drinking. You can see it's it's from my compost pile. It's a nice big big chunk of compost uh, put into some water from my my kitchen sink, filtered through the frontier straw, and it came out clear and actually tasted good. Um, I'm surprised what compost water tastes like, but it was actually very pleasant. Um, I don't know that I'd start a water bottle water bot I don't know that I would start a water bottling company selling it but if I had to drink it I could drink it and I know it's going to keep me safe so again extremely impressed um Aquamira is the manufacturer of this um thumbs up high quality product low cost low weight it's going to sit in my everyday carry pack and if the zombies are coming and I've got to hide in somebody's compost pot and they've got a little pool of water there, I'm going to be able to hydrate myself. Thumbs up for that. Good job, Akram. All right, so tonight we have reviewed the Gaelic Ale from the Highland Brewing Company in Asheville, North Carolina. And again, very, very tasty beverage here. Um, I'm enjoying it quite much as you can see. I've almost finished it. It's a very good beverage. Um, nice American ale, very good beer. We've also talked about and reviewed Buffalo Trace. Incredible bourbon. Nice, it has a nice sweet mellow tone to it. Um, myself personally, I'm not a fan of rye bourbons. I like the wheats because I kind of like the sweeter undertones to it. That's just my preference because I like to sip them either neat or with just a little ice. Um, if I'm drinking a rye, I kind of like to mix it with a, something to complement the rye. Um, but as far as a, a wheat-based bourbon that's, that's affordable, this you cannot go wrong with. Incredible product. I love Buffalo Trace and I can't wait to go and tour their distillery. And now we get to our bushcraft survival portion, the Aquamira Frontier Straw. Wow, oh, dripping everywhere. I am impressed. I drank a bit of compost water. And this is a, probably, I would say, a half pound ball of compost out of my compost heap that contains everything. I live on a 14 acre farm and we compost everything we can so that we can put it in the garden in the spring. And that, I mean, everything goes in there. So looking at what Aquamira says on here, um, I wasn't worried because the filters that are in here block out the biologicals. That's the biggest thing. You don't want to get any type of a dysentery or some sort of a a uh, diarrheal event during shit hit the fan which will dehydrate you further where this does no good but for $13 and low weight it comes packaged in a nice bag that you can collect water in use the straw drink from the bag seal the bag and save it for later it also has the instruction card with it which is a nice 
I don't know, probably 35 or 40 pound cardboard A-frame that you can use as a fire, fire shield for like your small espit stove that I reviewed on a previous video. Um, tear it up, write notes on it if you need to, use it as fire tinder, use it as fire start. You've got a nice card that you can use as well inside this pack. So this, this entire unit, I have to give this a, a, again to reiterate what I said earlier, a 9.5. I am extremely impressed with the Frontier Straw from Aquamira. Impressive product. I will definitely be purchasing more to put in my other bags aside from my EDC bag, which is where I pulled this from tonight. Um, but very impressed after drinking this and having it taste good and nice clear water. Wow, that was good. All right, YouTubers, this is John coming at you from Bourbon Country. Again, a second review here. We did a beer, we did a bourbon, and we did a survival unit, bushcraft. Um, look forward to videos in the future where we'll be talking about bushcrafting skills, uh, survivalist skills. We'll be showing how to do those skills. Um, we'll get into some how-tos, maybe do some blacksmithing. Um, like I showed earlier tonight, this is a hand-forged bottle opener. We'll be doing a video on, on how to do that. And not only how to do it, but how to do it where it doesn't take up much time. It doesn't take hardly any money. It's stuff you can scrounge and build yourself a, a forge where you can shape steel into rudimentary items that you need every day. This, a fork, a spoon, a small cutlery knife. Um, also going out into the woods, uh, starting fires, how to build fire kits, how, what I put in my EDC, what I put in my bug out bag. Um, important stuff. It might not be the best fit for you, but hopefully while I'm going through that stuff, you might pick up some little pointers that you say, hey, I've never thought of that. I'm going to use that and add that to your skill set. I'm not here to tell you everything there is to know about it because I don't know. I'm still learning myself, but I do have some knowledge that you might not have. And if I can impart that knowledge to you, that makes us both the better for it. So until my next video, y'all stay good. Okay, so I live in the heart of bourbon country in West Central Kentucky. I live on a West Central Kentucky. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>